Hi, it's Miss Melissa with the Usher Hout Free Library and the third installment of our Thanksgiving book, Junie B. First Grader, Turkeys We Have Loved and Eaten and Other Thankful Stuff, written by Barbara Park, published by Random House. There is a prize for the classroom with the best list of items they are thankful for. Let's see what room one has put on their list. In addition to toilet paper, we're in chapter nine, socks and other surprises. Wednesday, dear first grade journal, today is the day for the Thanksgiving feast in room one. All of the children had to dress up like pilgrims or Native Americans at the first Thanksgiving. And so that is how come I told mother, do not make me a pilgrim costume and I mean it. I could not have been any louder, by the way. Only what do you know? Mother said she forgot I told her that. Plus also, she gave the costume job to my grandma, Helen Miller. So, big surprise, this morning Helen brought the costume to my house. And oh no, oh no, it was a stupid pilgrim dress. I did a shriek at that thing and then I ran down the hall and out the back door and I hid behind the trash can next to the steps. But mother found me steep speedy fast and then me and her had a little tussle you know what now i am sitting in my chair at school and i am wearing a stupid pilgrim dress this is the worstest day of my entire school career your friend junie b i do not want to be a pilgrim and i mean it i slumped in my seat real glum then bam the morning got even worse on account of May came running into the room and she was dressed like a Native American girl. And that is what I wanted to be. I slumped lower in my chair. May hurried down our row and she poked me in the arm. Hello, Junie Jones. Hello, she said. Look at my Thanksgiving costume my mother made for me. I am a Native American girl. She poked me again. Look how great this costume is. Look at the fringe on the bottom of my dress. Look at the beads around the collar. Look at my cute moccasins. Look at the long braid in my hair. I turned my face away from her. Look at the back of my head, I said. May ran around in front of me. Guess what, Judy Jones? My name is Chief May, and I'm chief of everybody. And I will be bossing around the Native Americans at the feast today, plus I will be bossing around the pilgrims, too. After that, she looked me over. Hmm, let's see. It looks like you are a little pilgrim girl, she said. A little pilgrim girl is not a chief of anyone, is she? A little pilgrim girl is just a girl. She did a smirk. What is your name, little pilgrim girl, she asked. Do you have a name? I made squinty eyes at her. My name is Get Out of My Face, Chief Nutball. I said back, I do not know where I came up with that great name. These things just come to me. May frowned her eyebrows. I think your name is Pilgrim Grouchy, she said. After that, she swung her long braid in my face, and then she sat down in her seat. Just then, Mr. Scarry came hurrying into the room. He had been talking to someone in the hall. His eyes beamed at our clothes. Boys and girls, you look so great in your Thanksgiving outfits, he said. We are going to have the best time with our families today. He held up one finger. And don't forget, today is the day the office is going to announce who won the thankful contest. I did a loud groan. Great, I grouched. I'm already hottish and sweatish. Now all I need to do is win a pie and vomit. Suddenly, a loud noise interrupted my grouching. It was coming from the hall outside room one. All the children ran to, ran to see, and whoa, it was Principal. And he was hammering a nail in our door with his shoe. All of our mouths came open at that sight. I cannot believe my eyeballs, I said real shocked. If I nail the hole in our door, I will get sent to Principal's office. I looked at Mr. Scott. You know that's true, by the way, I said. I've been sent for way less than that. Sheldon raised his hand. How come you're doing that, Principal, he asked. How come you're nailing a hole in our door with your shoe? 
Just then, his eyes glanced down at Principal's sock foot. Whoa! What kind of socks do you have on there? He asked, real curious. Sheldon Crick got down on his hands and knees and looked closer. He raised his eyebrows. Are those knee socks, he said. My grandpa Ned wears knee socks. I got on my hands and knees, too. My grandpa Frank Miller wears those kind of socks, too, I said. We call them old man socks. Principal's face looked embarrassed at us. He said to please get away from his sock foot, and then he quick put his shoe back on. After that, he did a deep breath to settle down, and then, surprise, surprise, he reached into his pocket, and he pulled out a giant blue ribbon, and he hung it right on the doornail. Congratulations, shoe room one, he said real happy. You won first place in this year's thankful contest. All of room one stood very still for a minute. That is called, we were in a daze, I believe. Then, boom, we jumped, we clapped, and danced, and yelled, we won, we won, we won, we yelled. Mr. Scarry's face looked thrilled with us. I knew you could do it, he said. I knew you were a special group. Me and Herbert linked our arms together, and we skipped in a happy circle. We won, Judy B, he hollered. We won a giant first place blue ribbon and a big pumpkin pie. And then, screech. All of our skipping came to a stop because we remembered the vomit part, that's why. We looked sickish at each other, then all the other children looked sickish too. Oh no, we said pumpkin pie, we have to eat pumpkin pie. But then, ha, good old Lenny came to the rescue because he already had the whole thing figured out. Don't worry everyone, I've got a plan, he said, very excited. He pointed to the back of the room. We've got a giant cleanup sink back there, remember? All of us looked at the cleanup sink. So, Lenny grinned. So if anyone makes us eat pie, we'll just put it in our mouths, then quick run to the cleanup sink and quick spit it out, he said. <sighs> Olive room thought for a second. A big breath of relief whooshed right out of us. Because spitting pie in the cleanup sink is genius, of course. We started smiling again. Hooray for Lenny. That guy thinks of everything. Chapter 10, Naming Stuff. All of us skipped back to our seats. Principal walked to the front of the room, and he saw our thankful list on the board. We had added more stuff on Tuesday afternoon, so now it was 20 whole items long. Principal read the list out loud. One, cranberry jelly in a can two exploding biscuits, three nipsy doodles, four rainbow sprinkles, five toilet paper, six money, seven Philip Johnny Bob, eight police sergeant Chuck, nine snossages, ten stinky, eleven good old Larry from last year, twelve cookies but not the coconut kind, thirteen Jose's remote control, fourteen lightning bug, fifteen the big box of sixty-four crayons, 16, Penguins, 17, Lenny's Washcloth Puppet, 18, Whipped Cream that Roger accidentally squirted in his mouth before school, 19, Nasal Spray, 20, The Cartoon Network. After he finished reading, Principal smiled real big. Boys and girls, this is the most honest list we have ever had in the school contest, he said. Thank you for telling us what children are really thankful for. Lenny turned around and looked at May. Then he did a big smirk. Nipsey Doodle's rule, he said. May turned his head back around. Just then we heard feet in the hallway. And yay, yay, hooray, our favorite janitor came through the door. Gus Filoni, it's Gus Filoni, I shuddered real thrilled. Gus Filoni is the nicest janitor in the whole entire world. He was pushing a cart with a table and folding chairs on it. I jumped up so he could see me. Gus Filoni, it's me, it's Junie B. Jones, I yelled. Did you hear we won the thanks thankful contest? Did you see the blue ribbon on our door? I hurried to the front of the room. What do you have there, Gus Filoni? Is that folding chairs for our feast today? Because maybe I could help you with them. Gus Filoni did a chuckle at me. Well, Junie B. Jones, don't you look nice today? You're all dressed up like a pilgrim girl. I nodded. Yes, I know, I said. At first, I did not want to be a pilgrim girl, so me and mother had a tussle behind the trash can. Only now I'm hardly even sweaty. 
Plus, also, I can spit pie in the cleanup sink. So my whole entire mood got better. Gus Filoni looked confused at me. Principal looked confused, too. Mr. Scari walked me back to my seat, and he said for me to please stay put. After that, Principal helped Gus Filoni and Mr. Scari set up the table and chairs. And wait until you hear this. All of our guests had signed up to bring the feast food, so room one didn't have to make a thing. I tapped on my friend Herbert. What kind of food is your mother bringing, I said. My mother and Grandma Miller are bringing cranberry jelly. Herbert turned around. My mother has to work today, but my grandmother's bringing carrot sticks. Oh boy, I said I love carrot sticks. Lenny grinned. Me too, he said. My grandmother's coming to the feast, but she's a terrible cook, so I signed her up for napkins. Sheldon heard us talking. My Uncle Vern is coming with my Grandpa Ned Potts, and they're bringing tater tots. I did a gasp at that delicious news. Yummy, yum, yum, I said tater tots. Med, May threw back her head. Pilgrims and Native Americans did not eat tater tots, she said real annoyed. My mother is bringing the real kind of food that they ate at the first Thanksgiving. She stood up at her desk and she swung her long braid again. My mother is bringing squash and beans and stewed onions, she said real proud. After that, room one got very quiet. We were thinking about stewed onions, I believe. And then one by one, we all turned around and we looked at the cleanup sink again. I glanced at Lenny. That sink's gonna get a real workout today, I said. Just then we heard more footsteps in the hall and yippee, yippee, our first Thanksgiving guest was here. And it was Lucille's Richie Nana. And he, she brought her real actual chef guy with her. The chef guy was wearing a tall white hat and a long apron. It was almost all the way down to his knees. Also, he was carrying a giant silver tray with a shiny lid on top. He put the tray on the feast table and he pulled off the lid. And wowie, wow, wow, it was the giantest turkey I ever saw. We ran to the table. Whoa, said Roger. How much does that big boy weigh? How much did it cost, said Lenny. Can I have a drumstick? asked Herbert. What's his name? said Sheldon. The Richie Nana started to sputter. Oh, dear. Well, let's see. I didn't really shop for it myself, so I don't know what it weighs or what it costs. Um, I don't think it has a name. She raised her eyebrows at the chef guy. Does it? she asked. I thought for a second, then I clapped my hands. I've got an idea. Let's name him. Mr. Turkey Pants, I said. Then I laughed and laughed and all of room one laughed too. Names are always funnier if you add the word pants to the end of it. My grandpa Fred Miller, Frank Miller taught me that. Just then another guest came through the door. It was Herbert's grandmother and she had a big white bowl full of carrot sticks. Whoa, that is a lot of carrot sticks, madam, I said. Sheldon looked at me and grinned. What's their name, Junie B? He asked. I thought again. Their name is Mr. Crunchy Pants, I said. After that, all of us laughed, laughed even more. Richard Scar said, go back to our seats. Boys and girls, I know it's fun to have our families at our Thanksgiving feast today, but we need to be in our best behavior for them, remember? His eyes zoomed on me. And Junie B, I'm pretty sure we're done naming the food. Okay? I did a salute. Aye, aye, Captain, I said. I am a hoot. Just then I turned my head and I saw my mother come in with Grandma Helen Miller. And yippee, my Grandpa Frank Miller came too. They put a big bowl of jiggly cranberry jelly on the table. Hey, look, it's Mr. Jiggle Pants, I shouted. Mr. Sky did a frown at me. Mother and Grandma Miller frowned too. Grandpa laughed real loud. Then Grandma poked him with her elbow. I slid way down in my chair. Oops, I said, sorry. Then I covered my mouth with my hand and I didn't name food for the rest of the day. Next on our fourth installment, we will find out what happens with the stewed onions and the pumpkin pie. Happy Thanksgiving from the Oosterhout Free Library. <laughs>